I'm coming. I'm coming. What's up guys, I'm Goy FPV. It's time to build a new awesome and reliable cinematic FPV drone. I recently decided to step up my filmmaking career and one of the most important things is to have reliable drones and to have backups just in case something goes wrong at the worst time possible. So this build is not only for the video, but I will make my second 5-inch cinematic FPV drone. The one that I have right now is an Evoque F5D running the DJI 04 Pro capable of carrying a full-size action cam on top. For today's video, we will build together a Mario Master V2 with motors and stack from Maps King, which I reviewed previously on the channel and I will use a DJI 03 air unit for the video transmission. Although this video is sponsored by Maps, I want to assure you that I will only share my honest opinion as always. If you don't know who Maps King is, they are an FPV parts manufacturer selling anything you need to build your FPV drone. Check them out and don't forget to use my code for an extra 10% discount. For this build I will use a dead cat frame from Mario which has a very interesting design and is compatible with the O3 air unit. For the electronics we will use the MAPS stacks and their SZ V2 motors which should provide a smooth and efficient flight performance as well as a GPS for making sure that we will not lose the drone in case of a failsafe. We begin by installing the frame like a puzzle which should be very easy. Just put everything together and secure all the screws down. It might be a little bit intimidating, but Mario fortunately comes with the instruction manual, so it will be just easy to have to assemble everything together as it's shown here in the manual. The next comes the stack installation. And for this, we need to use the provided stack screws from the Mario frame set. Next, we have to install the grommets for isolating the stack from the screws and the frame and also to isolate vibrations. After we make sure that everything comes nicely together, I will remove the flight controller on top to make more room for the next step, which is installing the motors. For the motor installation, I will secure them down with only two screws at the beginning and make sure that the screws are not reaching the copper winding on the other side. Run the wires through some protective sleeves and cut them to the right size just enough to reach the ESC's pads. Before soldering all 12 wires, I need to pre-thin both the wires and the pads and then solder them nicely to the board. This is also the perfect timing to solder the capacitor and the battery lead to the ESC. In the next step, we will install the remaining peripherals which will connect to the flight controller on the top of the ESC. For this, it's important to pre-install everything and plan how everything connects together. In some cases, we will use connectors and in others, we will directly solder on top of the flight controller. Everything is documented in the wiring diagrams of the flight controller and the peripherals. Always double check until you are 100% sure it's correctly done. If you are in doubt, ask for support in the comments and I will be happy to help you out. If everything is placed correctly, it should look something like this. Make sure nothing is rubbing, nothing is pinched and there is no debris or soldering residue left around. This may lead to unexpected short circuits and bad things can happen. It's time to assemble the frame, configure it and test it, but not before you hear hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. You did it, right? Thank you. Next, I will configure the drone. If you want to skip directly to the flight test, navigate to the flight test chapter. Now, if you're a beginner, the beta flight configurator can be a little bit overwhelming, but I will show you my process to make things easy and fast. To start, download the latest beta flight configurator and connect the laptop to the flight controller using a USB connector. Press connect if it doesn't connect automatically. First thing first is a sports tab, which maps the software to the pad or connectors where peripherals are connected to the flight controller. To learn more about this, check the wiring diagram provided by the manufacturer. Another important step is to calibrate the accelerometer by setting the drone on a flat surface and hitting the calibration button. If everything works, you should see the drone in the configurator following the physical drone movements. If anything is reversed, we need to offset the axis in the configuration tab until it is correctly oriented. Here, the most crucial thing to do is to configure the air mode to always on and set the maximum arm angle to 180 degrees so the drone will arm in any position if it needed. Don't forget, always hit save after you change any configuration.
information and double check it has been saved. For this video we will not manually tune the drone but we will use some available presets which from my experience are more than enough to get you started. So go to the presets tab, search for UAV tag 5 inch and apply the preset. Done! There is also one more preset for the OSD to work on the O3 air unit and this is also easy to apply. Just search for it, select the port used for the VTX and apply the preset. Now to make sure the motors are spinning in the right direction, we need to switch to the motors tab and use the wizard to set the correct direction of the motors. I usually set them to spin outwards and then use the wizard. Make sure the props are off and the battery is connected. Spin each motor and reverse if needed. Save and double check if everything spins as expected. Next we need to make sure we have RC communication. We should bind the remote to the receiver and check if the inputs are available in the receiver tab. Make sure the protocol is correctly set and the channels are mapped correctly. Now that we have RC link we switch to the modes tab and configure the arm switch, the mode switch where I usually use a three position switch for angle, horizon and the rest of the range for acro mode. Also we need a failsafe switch and a GPS rescue switch as well as a buzzer switch to make the drone buzz in case we need to find it. More about these modes you can find in the previous videos about GPS rescue configuration. And the last part but very important is the OSD which provides us real time data in the goggles. This is fully configurable and I use it for monitoring the flight. Battery voltage and current draw GPS satellite and coordinate phone direction. You can check them all and see what you need but don't exaggerate as it can get very distracting during flight. Just essential telemetry data for pre-flight checks, in-flight monitoring and rescue information should be enough. If you haven't done it already, please like and subscribe. This helps a lot with growing the channel and I cannot do it without your support. Okay guys, so we will do the test in this video at Motor Park. It's a track day and uh, we are here to test as you see, and we are here to test these new map skiing motors on this uh, Mario drone. It's gonna be so much fun and I hope everything is gonna be well because I didn't test the drone before. It will be the first flight and we will really put to the test these motors. Angle is aggressive, test them to the maximum. Let's go. Ready? Oh my god, no! Battery man is almost dead. I fucking ripped all off. Jesus man. I think I have to come back. <laughs> Already. Oh wow. yes, I need to come back. One more shot. <laughs> oh man, it's dead. It's dead. It's coming. I'm coming. No, don't let me. I'm coming, I'm coming. Ah, ah. Yeah, brother, let's see. 
bro. They are ripping. To be honest, it flies amazing, amazing. No fucking crop wash, nothing is. Oh my god, man. This was another amazing experience building a new drone together with you and my sponsor, Maps King. Don't forget to check the links in the description and use my code for an extra 10% discount. Bye.